Mesdames et messieurs, ce combat de championnat est sous la supervision et l'approbation de la NABO et de son superviseur, M. Rudy Paz, avec nous dans le ring. Ladies and gentlemen, this championship bout is sanctioned by the North American Boxing Organization and its supervisor with us here in the ring today, Mr. Rudy Paz from Phoenix, Arizona. Les juges pour ce combat de championnat. The three judges appointed at ringside to score this championship bout. Monsieur Richard de Carufel de Montréal, Mr. Ted Gimza from Chicago, Illinois, et Monsieur Jack Woodburn de Montréal. L'arbitre du combat, referee in charge of this championship bout, Monsieur Jean-Guy Brousseau. Et maintenant, en direct du cabaret du Casino de Montréal et en direct au réseau TVA, voici le combat principal de ce gala. 12 rounds de boxe pour le championnat des poids lourds de la NABO. And now, live from the Montreal Casino Cabaret, here is today's main event. 12 rounds of action for the NABO Heavyweight Championship. D'abord, dans le coin bleu, portant la culotte noire et pesant 246 livres. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue quarter, wearing black trunks, his official weight, 246 pounds. Il a 14 victoires, dont 13 par KO, en 16 combats professionnels. His official professional record, 14 victories, including 13 by knockout in 16 bouts. Il a participé aux Jeux Olympiques d'Atlanta en 1996, accueillant Dornsby en Californie, Josué Blockage. Son adversaire dans le coin rouge porte la culotte pour gagne et pèse 246 livres. Across the ring, his opponent fights out of the red corner, wears burgundy trunks. He also weighed in at an even 246 pounds. En 17 combats, il a 16 victoires, dont 11 par KO. His official record reads 16 victories, including 11 by knockout in 17 professional bouts. L'actuel aspirant numéro 1 de la LABO et champion canadien des poids lourds. He is currently ranked number one by the NABO. He is the current heavyweight champion of Canada, Akayon de Trois-Rivières, David Kadje. And the fighters now will eventually make their way to the center of the ring for instruction from Jean-Guy Brousseau. Cadu against Blokus, two titles at stake. Let's listen in. Vous avez un combat, vous avez donné mes héritiers. Je mets un combat prêt. Faites attention au combat. Surveillez vos têtes. Tuez les gants et bonne chance. Let's check out the matchup right right here. Seeing Kadjia, 6'6", uh, Blokus is 6'2". Both these guys came in at 246 pounds. Kadjia has a one and a half reach advantage, and Blokus has experience as a professional with seven years on him. Scheduled 12 rounder inside the Montreal Casino. Jim Taddy, Ryan Grant with the action. Round one underway. And Blokus is one of these guys for a heavyweight. Looks like he does a lot of upper body movement as a small, as a small guy. Him being 6'2. Nice right hand there from Booker's backing up. Kedjo, him being 6'2. He's probably used to being the bigger man against certain guys in the ring, but Kedjo being a bigger, taller opposition than he's probably used to fighting. Okay, you're getting hit with that jab, though. Yeah, There's a long way to go, obviously, but Kadir seems to have a little bit of an issue trying to figure out what to do with what Blokus is offering here. Jean-Guy Rousseau telling these guys to step back completely. And good work on the inside there from Blokus. A good work on the inside from Gadjir holding him down, making sure there's no free shots. And it's going to be a little test for Kedjir tonight there, Jim, because this guy, Blokus, both these guys have good amateur pedigree backgrounds. Both these guys been to the bigger tournaments as, as amateur guys. Blokus went to the Olympic Games Atlanta. Kedjir went to the Commonwealth Games. Nice left hook on the inside there from Kedjir. 
plus de respect parce que depuis le début, Blocus est volontaire et très actif. Blocus got to keep using that jab and keep moving that upper body there. As he was in the beginning of the fight. Instead of letting Kedjo dictate the pace and start getting off. Fifty-five seconds towards the end of round one. on the inside, left hook, left uppercut on the inside there from Gadjir. Gadjir has come uh, quite a long way from how this fight opened and we're, you know, 30 seconds left in the first round, but seemed a little awkward with what Blokas was throwing his way, but has managed to get around that and has really taken the upper hand here. The one thing with also Blokas, Blokas has looked like he's not sure where he wants to place those shots, but the thing is if he does, he's going to hurt you any which way because he just has that big, big body structure. And there is the end of round one. The best of gym boxing continues on the Fight Network. Looking in the corner of Blocus at the Montreal Casino, Jim Taddy, Ryan Grant, round one is done. And let's go back and recapture some of the moments, RG. There's Blocus trying to work his way on the inside to the body of the bigger kid here and using that reach out of the jab, but then he's just trying to find his way. Trying to get through some, some shots as well. Even though the, those shot, those those uppercuts and those tight shots to the body are a little bit choppy, is because he's not giving himself that room to get those shots placed inside. The heavyweights go at it, and so quite a contrast in more ways than one from what we've shown you earlier on this particular broadcast. And you know, for one thing, it's now into round two, and for another thing. Uh, there's been more than two punches. I mean, some of those other fights were unbelievably fast, and this one looks more like a marathon than a sprint. And both these guys picking their shots, very selective. This way, seeing both these guys knowing their skill set. Because by, by round three, four, you're going to start seeing the power and a little more aggressive for both, both these guys. Semi like they're trying to prove a point that I belong here. Well, and there's big stuff at stake, two titles, right? Yep. Fighting for the WBO NABO heavyweight title. This is a good title now to this. Build up your name into the ranking contingencies of the WBO. And get get your way up. Nice left hook to the body there from Kiju again. Get your way back up into like the, the quarter, the, 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 the big title shots. It's like an intercontinental title or like a starter belt. Nice job there from Blokus. Nice double jab again from Blokus. He's touched with the first one. Good body shot it's again. Big right hook over the top. You're seeing some good moments out of Blokas here, but it, would, it, it looks like Kadu has a little more power, doesn't it? He does have a little more pop on his shots. But because Ked, um, Blokas is a guy that just looks very awkward and uncoordinated, is why these shots are coming off as good as they are. Kedjo is just trying to try get through those big shots. And pretty good action for heavyweights. Remember, scheduled for 12 rounds. The one thing these guys got to start doing is start picking the shots. Try to throw a big bam beam and throw a bunch of shots. Especially with these guys and be a little more critical because these guys have that amateur background. Nice left hook there from Blokas. Back it up. Oh, nice left hook there from Kedjo. Looked like that could have rocked Blokas. He was cheered on from somebody in the crowd to go to the body, and boy, did he ever. Again, those big left hooks were applied back from Lucas. 
David A good work on the inside, and you see Kedja being smart, trying to tie him up. And both these guys wow. are bringing away some big shots towards the ending of the round. That is the end of round two. Plenty to go over. We'll get some replays for you. And, you know, really, for a scheduled 12 rounder heavyweight battle with a title on the line, a lot of action. You might expect a slower start. Nice left hook to the body there from Kenya. And again, digging that left hook downstairs on Vlokas. Nice double jab there from Vlokas there. So we'll be looking for some body shots from Blokas based on that. Round three. We're seeing the body shots where they're slowing him down. One thing you will notice, especially on that exchange, uh, Kadir really covered up nicely, didn't he? It wasn't anything to hit but arms. A good little snapping shots by both these guys. Both these guys still trying to prove a point to say, yo, this is my, this is my opportunity. A bloke has come back and say, no, this is my opportunity right now. Blokas is corner giving him some good instructions there, telling him to come with that right hand to the body. I have to say, you know, there was some awkwardness out of Kadu in the early part of the first round. Not so much anymore. He's in total control of what he's doing here. Nice right hand over the top again there from Blokas. Over that left jab from Kadu. You see the average runs that both these guys fight catch up 4.6 to blow just 3.1. So that means these guys are fighting, if these guys just fight, he'll show average to go to 12 rounds tonight. These guys have never really been there because on average they're knocking out guys with four or five rounds. I like what you pointed out earlier about Blokas uh, now being the smaller of the two in the ring and probably hasn't been in that position before. And you see a real effort on his part to figure out how to get inside because it's pretty clear that Kadu with his uh, bigger size can physically control this. The one thing it's so hard when you're such a big tall guy like Kadu, a good left hook to the body there from Kadu, you see him sit and dig on those shots there. When you're such a big guy like Kedju and your, your opponent is crouching over and getting small, which is forcing you to punch downwards, it, it's, an, it's annoying. You feel bothered on it, right? But at the same time, it's just for you to slowly figure it out. Good double jab there from Kajir. And that is the end of round three. We go back to their corners, talking about uh, 12 round fights. Kadir has been there once before, only once before, So, but he will have the reference point. And it takes a lot to even just do 12 rounds. Okay. 
One thing, can't use corner, can't use corner. Both these corners are looking really poised and relaxed. There's this left hook, right hook, combination of that uppercut. Hook, uppercut, hook. Digging those nice shots inside. Just missed the game, the last one. And again, that left hook to the body. That's a shot right there. And you see on Gabby Mancini's un unofficial scorecards, they gave him Kedzia third round. I think we're both in it all in, in agreement on that one, right? Yeah, you know what? The first round, Blokus did win the fight. I have it the same way that they have it scored. Here. Yeah, I thought, as I said earlier, Kedzia was just a little awkward trying to figure out how to get his positioning uh, based on what Blokus was offering, but he, he corrected that towards the end of the first round. And, uh, you know, I would give the first round to Blokus just based on that. And these guys are trying to dictate the pace, both these guys on the left hand. Nice left hook there from Kedju as he's stepping back. Wow, Blokus in trouble here. Could you able to land some solid shots? Round four Six action. Job again there from Lopez. And again. But can you coming through those double jab right hand combination and finish that left hook? And you see Kedju trying to get through. Oh, he just missed me with that big left hook there. Good weaving there from Blokas. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Blokas always looking to make himself smaller than he needs to be. Instead of staying right there and, and absorbing the shots. Oh, nice right hand over the top there from Blokas. Well, Blokas took one there. That looked like it slowed him right down. Yes, it did. He had to cover up, and now he's hanging on to regain some composure. And so all of this happens in round four, and it's scheduled for 12. You wonder if they could get there. That's the one thing I give Kedju a lot of credit. He moves with the shots so well when he's getting out of the way. And same thing with Blokas. He does nice weaving, nice, nice weaving, and 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 Bobby getting out of the way of the shots. But Kedju also good stepping back, picking those shots. Oh. Nice double left hook there from Blokas. And again, and the thing is with this guy wow. like Blokas, you, you never think that this guy would turn it on like this. He's just an awkward standing guy. It look, looks like he's in good shape, but what are you good at? Well, he was in trouble early in the round and seems to have gained the upper hand. An interesting reversal. But you know what? He's holding his own. He's holding his own with the top champ. The best of gym boxing continues right here on the Fight Network. Back inside the Montreal Casino, Jim Taddy, Ryan Grant calling the action Blokas against Kadu for the WBO NABO heavyweight title replays from the previous round. Good weaving, good weaving. I was talking about weaving those shots, but not answering back with nothing. He's making him miss. They're making Kadu waste some energy right there. Nice little short up cut on the inside, finish that left hook. Kadu making a reset and start again. And we should point out the WBO NABO heavyweight title is vacant, so it's not like one of these guys has to defend it. They both have the same opportunity and are both in the same position going for it. You see it on the other two scorecards. Um, Mr. Mancini gave Lucas the, the same same round 10-9. That, that um, he won. Well, that's interesting because uh, good about, double left hook there from David. About 90 seconds into oh. the round, Locus was in trouble and he reversed it, and he's in trouble again here in round five. And this is where David needs to just use that jab and box and move. 
Good little jab on the inside, like an up jab. And Blokas needs to start getting those arms a little bit active, though. When he gets busy, because he's awkward, he can just throw some punches and he won't see them coming. Nice right hand off of that block there from um, Blokas. Left hook to the body. Blokas certainly making a statement in the first minute of this round. But there's still plenty of time left for Kadu to get back into this. They have interesting chemistry, these two fighters. Yeah, both these guys, you can see, as I was saying, from the beginning, before this fight started. They got some good amateur background, traveled around the world, these guys. So they, it's like they, they probably even fought in the amateurs, as much as I know. But at the same time, once you have that upbringing of, oh, you think you're good this way, let me, let me try to step it up this way, that, that pedigree, you know what I mean? Yeah. Look, look at Blokas saying, that, I, got, I got abs, baby. You get me down here all day. Once you got that pedigree and, and like, sportsmanship of Kamari oh. to get the stop. Look at the big right hand over the top there from Blokas. And it's slowed, slowing down Kedja. A nice stiff jab again. This is going to be a nice pick, pick punch to the end. I don't see none of these guys knocking out each other. Uh, you never know what fatigue can do, but they have, uh, when I was talking about the chemistry, aside from how they fight each other, the energy seems to flow back and forth. And so, with, with fluency, too. Yeah, so it probably if it went the distance, would be a fairly even fight, hard one to score. According to the one judge, it's dead even here going into round five, and I don't think many would disagree. Nice right hand over the top there from Blokas. And chopping those right hands over the top. That is the end of round five. We'll hang around, do some replays, and go into the corners. This guy's dropping the water ball in the corner here. That'll wake him up. Let's check the replays here right now. Okay, Jim missing that jab, and there's looks with that nice stiff jab. Double jab, right hook around the defense. Finish with that left hook on that side. And it's starting back with that double jab. Nice setup and finish there for Blokas, wasn't it? Very nice setup and finish. And even those shots, he's putting those gloves in a certain way that he'll hit you with those shots. Well, I wouldn't disagree with that scorecard, would you? Mm, no, not really. I just don't like the 15 love, 15 15, 30 15, 30 30. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. The back and forth type yeah. of matchup, right? Yeah. Especially, especially when you got guys in here, Jim. Like you can see, for bigger boys, these guys could box. Yeah. They're setting the tone. They're moving their head. Their defense is tight when they're tight. These guys can actually do this whole fight just off of precision boxing. Nice step back of that left hook to the body there from Blokas. And Blokas is taking a deep breath there and starting off with that double jab. Flicking that jab out there on him. I don't want to see Kadju start. I think what Kadju's got to start doing now, Jim, he's the only one body shot that he throws the whole time now is that left hook to the body. Well, he's got to get busier. I mean, if you're 
gauging the fight on who's working harder it would be Blokas. Right, I think he's just, the Blokas is trying to out hustle him, and and Kedju is trying to out muscle him instead of Kedju is just trying to put on that same hustle that Blokas is trying to put on right now. I think at this point, and, and uh, you know, there's plenty of fight left. Kedju actually looks a little tired to me. Yeah, even with that little barrage there, having Blokas on the ropes. Nice right hand off of that there from Blokas, right off the rope, pulling back. It's coming back with that big right hand. Good, good job from both these guys. Nice block there from Blokas. Good work on the inside there from Kajia. But Kajia's got to step back and then start working again instead of leaning and laying and praying on his opponent. He's got to find some energy, some will, and get busier because he's going to dig himself into a hole, barring knockout, that he might not be able to climb out of. And Nice, nice combination at the end there from Kajir. And around six, uh, and let's go into the Blokas corner. All right. Now, we ain't, listen, we ain't ahead of the, uh, of the fight, but only by a little. You hear me? All right. We ahead, but only by a little. We only, uh, we only about two rounds up. All right, seven, seven rounds. I'm not six. Losing these guys Vaseline down. Can't just check out the replays here from the last round. There's that nice right hand coming off the rope here from Blokas. There's that nice little short left hook on the inside there. Right hand to the body from Kedja. And here it goes again. So getting set for round seven. Wow, they gave that round to Kadu. Okay. And, and you know what? I don't see that round like no. Yaya Mancini seeing that round closer than I saw it. I think maybe Kedu could have been more offensively busier. Yeah. But Blokas landed the cleaner and better punches that round. Well, but either way, I think we would probably have it even after six, which is where he has it. And so, having said that, what was said to Blokas in his corner, we're ahead by a couple of rounds. I don't know that that's the best thing to tell you. Not fighter. at all, and, and especially, Jim, when you're in the guy's hometown. Well, you don't know. I mean, you, you could feel that you're ahead by two rounds, but you never if pass that along to your fighter. I'll tell you this, Jim. If you're my guy, nice nice combination there from Kenji on the inside. If you're my fighter, man, and we're fighting somebody in their backyard, there's not one round I'm going to tell you we're winning the fight. No, no. I didn't. In effect, when you're going into round seven of schedule 12, what you really should be impressing upon your fighters is that this is the meat of the fight coming up next. Forget about what you've done. Look forward. Go for it. And a big uppercut on the inside there from Kedja, and then Blokas just pushing him right back. Good right hand over the top there from Blokas. A nice stiff jab. Another jab there from Blokas, and keep pumping it with that jab. He keeps getting through with those shots on the inside. A good right hand over the top again there from from Blokis. Nice little short left hook. Nice uppercut on the inside, just missing. Missing with that left hook again. And Blokis coming back with that jab. Nice right hand to the body, finish that uppercut there from Blokas. And good left hook again there from Kedja. Well, that's exactly what he needs to do. He's got to get busy, and it looks like he has, uh, you know, an influx of energy now, and this is going to help him. He's trying to pick up the pace and trying to get into those big shots. Of course, nobody told him between rounds he was up by a couple of rounds, and <laughs> that's the reverse psychology. Uh. Fight starting to change here, maybe. Yeah, these guys are starting. I mean, Kedja is starting to look like he's starting to get a little more rapido on his punches, and so and so is Blokas now. 
Logan's trying to put some combinations together, and there's this combination now. It looking like he's just chopping down. Kedja slowly but surely. Nice left hook on the inside there from Logos again. It looked like that he could have slowed down Kedja again. Nice right hook to the body from Kedja. Nice right hand left hook again from Blokas. And Blokas looks like he knows that he's starting to feel and sense something. All right, that's the end of round seven. We're going to step out. The best of Jim Boxing continues. Back inside the Montreal Casino, Jim Taddy, Ryan Grant uh, getting set for round number eight. Fairly even, if not even, Stephen fight so far between Blokas and Kadu for the vacant WBO and ABO heavyweight title. The one thing that I'll tell you, Blokas is looking good, but this fight's very back and forth competitive. It is. It's like uh, energy transfer. One has it and the other gets it, but uh, Blokas has been an industrious fighter here. Again, it's working his way inside, good head movement, blocking shots, good right hand off of that catch off the jab, and popping that jab again, coming through those short left hooks, right hand over that, stepping back over. He's doing the right things on the inside, but now, as I said it to you, Jim, as you see the unfinished scorecard now, Gary Mancini has it for Blokas, gave Blokas that last round. You cannot make this a seesaw battle when you're fighting someone's home turf. Right. Oh! With that nice right hand there over the top there from Blokas again. Yes, I think we all hear you on that one. And uh, the damning statement was in the Blokas corner before the last round, telling the fighter that he was up by two rounds. Uh, why anybody would even go there is beyond me. I mean, that's a natural impulse to just back off a bit you know, and go into the next round. And I'm not saying that in any fight that you fight a guy in their hometown, that automatically the hometown no, guy no, wins. You have to err on the side of caution. Yep. You have to. You have to assume that you have to more than than beat the fighter. Like it has to be hands down. No, you know, no negotiation on what you've done. 100%. I told my guys at the gym all the time. I said, when you're fighting a guy in his hometown or his home gym. You're not just fighting the guy, you're fighting the crowd. You're not just fighting the crowd, you're fighting the corners, you're fighting the judges, you're fighting everybody. Well, let's be honest. I mean, the judges know what to look for from their own fighter. They see them all the time. And so they may, you know, maybe there's some subjectivity there where they, they look at something and, and where you and I, if we're seeing the guy for the first time, I go, that's not good. They've seen him so many times, they understand that that's just what he does. That's exactly it. And now I see Blokas now. The Blokas is going to keep working that that cut on Kedjia's right eye. Kedjia now is getting off that, that 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 fast jab, but he wants to keep pumping that jab and keep working those shots. Good right uppercut to the body, but he wants to keep throwing those shots instead of just staying in front of Blokas on defense, right in front of him where he can fire back a barrage of shots. And Blokas picks his shots very well. Nice combination wow. on the inside there from Blokas. Oh, look at this. This is where really the difference in the fight is you see that on a regular occurrence out of Blokas. You don't see it at all out of Kadu. I mean, he, he's, he is fighting well, but he doesn't, like, there's little bits of domination there from Blokas. A nice body shot on the inside there from Blokas again. Good right up to the body. And nice little left hook there from Kadu. But there's nothing on those shots. He's just letting those hands go. There's nothing behind those punches. Like, what, what is he doing there? He looks tired. He looks very tired there. And yeah, again, that's another thing you're not seeing out of Blokas. Blokas is showing you that he's in there to work and try to out-hustle the guy that's a hometown guy. Wow. And when, it, when it's visually obvious like this, oh, nice left, nice short left hook response there from Kedjia. Remember, scheduled 12 rounder. This is round eight. This is the meat of the fight, and round eight is over. And this would now, I think they could safely say the Blokas are up by a couple of rounds, but I, I still wouldn't say that because there's plenty of fight left. Look inside the Kadu corner. This guy looks like a, a pretty fairly tired fighter at this point. He's got to find some energy. He's got to get busy out there. He has to get busy out there, even though there's cut now. Looks like it has him slowing down, but at the same time, your cut's not slowing you down. You got to get in there and work right back. 
as nothing happened. Good combination, good five punch combination there from Blokis. And coming back again after taking that little break. Three, four. And he's gonna come back with that big right hand left hook again after that. Not giving you a chance to break when you think it's over. And then that right hand left hook right at the end of it. With that right hand again, three punch. Both of these guys, you can see that they're just in their, I'll even call it their, their prime, and you see in the unofficial scorecards, Gabe Mancini, Gabe Blokas, the other round. They're just getting into their, 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 their prime aspects of their careers now, Jim. Well, this is the prime time of the fight, too. 9, 10, 11, and 12 rounds. And, uh, you know, you didn't see any pleading in the Kadu corner to, to find some energy, to get busy, to get out there. You know, that the fight may be slipping away or, or getting into a dangerous spot on the scorecard. None of that. And you, you would almost expect that that would be mandatory statements made between rounds here at this point of the fight. And and the thing is, with, with, with the, the desperation that you're trying to get from your fighter, it's sort of hard to somewhat pull the desperation out of your guy when he doesn't look desperate himself when he's in there working at times. I mean, it has to come from somewhere. He does look tired. I mean, he's done a reasonably good job here, but, but Blokas has outmaneuvered him in terms of doing things that would show up on a scorecard. Nice red hook on the inside again there for Blokas. And you see in Kenji just looking for a reason to hold on there. Good right hook again there from Blokas. And the thing is, Kenyu could box and move. It's not the first time he's seen him on the network. He's the guy if he box and move and using angles on, on the fighter. He could be in control of this fight from round one. But he's going to stay in front of a guy that's banging punches and chopping you down. Guess what's going to happen? You're going to get chopped down and beat up. Let's go back to the obvious. This is for the vacant WBO, NABO heavyweight title. There's no defending champ here. Right. And this is an opportunity right now. Kedja also being the Canadian heavyweight champion. He needs to start getting, and the current Quebec Council champion. And he's also won numerous medals as an amateur. You gotta start bringing out that fight a little bit more. Yeah. Well, fight like you own the ring. And he's fighting like he has it on lease at moments. Even if you're just having it on lease or renting at the time, you want to take care of what you have. Well, I think you have to credit Blokas for this. Yeah, yeah, and, and take nothing away from Blokas. Blokas, as we said it from the beginning of, the, of, of this fight here, he's another one of these guys that has a good amateur background, went to the Olympic Games, probably has even more amateur credibility than Kedjia. Nice right up, right hook to the body, coming with that long right uppercut on the inside. That is the end of round nine. And unfortunately for David Kadu, the fight has sort of settled into a pattern. Let's go to the Kadu corner and see if there's any pleading or just any kind of motivational stuff being said there. The one thing now, let's check out the replays first before I tell you what they said in Kedju's corner. They asked him, Kedju in his corner, are you tired? The one thing, you got to lie to your coach when it comes to it. They gave Kedju that round, which I haven't seen it. I have to disagree with Gabby Mancini there with that, with that selection of giving in that last round. Even if you're tired and you're telling your coach, yeah, I'm tired, but I gotta, I gotta get back into the fight. You gotta convince yourself. You can't just be like, yeah, I'm tired. Yeah, it's not an answer. It's, uh, it's said for a reason, right? Not looking for an answer, but a response. 
Good right hand Physical. again there from Blokas. A nice comeback there from Kedjia. Well, now he's got some energy and he needs it. I don't think we would agree with the scorecard that we flashed on the screen, but but we would agree with the end line as to how close it is and right. how much is at stake. Now we're in the final three rounds of this fight. Should it go the distance? And it's still up for negotiation here. Somebody has to step up. And even though Blokas has done that most of the fight, if Kadu was to turn it on for the final three rounds, he would win this. And good weaving there from Blokas there on the inside, keeping those hands tight. Those are good body shots. And Blokas is nice and easy, counteracting everything that Kedja is doing. Good block on defense, good left hook to the body there. Again there from Kedja, double left hook to the body. And he does, he does, he does, that's one of his favorite punches. But he's got to keep, he's got to follow up on that. Where he could close the show into something. Instead of just staying there and getting hit back with shots, that bloke is just firing back right in front of him. Like right there, nice little chopping right hook behind the defense. And good left hook after that. One minute to the end of round one here, and just want to see Kedju. He's just getting nailed straight up from from Blokas, as well as just slipping and weaving and stepping in to the punches that he's hitting off right oh, wow. there with that big right hand, right on Kedju's oh. chin again with the big right hand again. Blokas smells blood. Look out. Wow. And Blokas could box and move and take his time for the rest of this round. Nice right hand again. Just with those sequences of right hands, Jim, I would just make Blokas just move and box. This goes to show you what could happen if you could find a burst of energy at this point of the fight. Round 10, rapidly coming to a close. And there it is. The best of Jim Boxing continues right here on the Fight Network. Stay with us. Back inside the Montreal Casino, Jim Taddy, Ryan Grant getting set to call the championship rounds. 11 and 12 if we get there. You can hear the desperation there from Otis Grant talking to him. Here's a replays here. Pop that jab right in his face there from Lucas. He's just getting through. You're going to see now the right hand is just going to start seeping in right there over the top you can see the best round of blokers for the fight thus far home with that big right hand that yeah, left foot <laughs> so there is the instruction yeah my Focus. man he's ready to quit <laughs> and you can see that right now the way his body language can is answering it looks like he is ready to quit and it's the first time Bloke is getting into the championship rounds. It's round 11, just about to start, just started off. And of course, uh, Kadu has been there once before against Patrice LaRue. Went the full 12 rounds. And this is the time of the fight, and given the fatigue level, a nice little combination of energy and fatigue from one fighter to the next, and this could be over fast. It gets through that flicking jab too. It's not even like it's a he's push snapping it off at the shoulder. It's like he's just flicking it over and popping it with that jab. And good movement there from Blogus. There's that jab again, popping him again with that jab. And that right hand is in the tight jab. Nice right hook to the body and then pulling back away from that left hook upstairs coming from Kedjia. Good defense and good movement there from Blokas. Good jab. Good defensive movements there from Blokas. 
He's getting through with his shots, picking those shots. Look how he's just snapping his head back every time he throws that jab. He gets through and just snaps back. Kid just head every time. And popping that jab, nice movements. Taking his time into these championship rounds with 55 seconds left of round 11. Well, one thing is for sure, if it goes the distance, it's going to be a tight scorecard. You see, now there's an example of where you would like to do to be able to take advantage or, or score some points, and he wasn't able to muster much. Good body shots there, heavy body shots. And he's got to keep the same pressure of shots there and just back him up instead of having Bogus come back into the shots. You hit him with a big left hook to the body, and then Bogus comes back with that big right hand right after that. You can't make you go, you go, I go, or tit for tat. It's I go, I go, I go, I go, and then step around him and then w and work. That I go's a heck of a boxer, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> that is the end of round 11. Gonna head into the Blokas corner, see what's being said. Short shot. Breathe up. Breathe up, son. It's the last round. Get it long and slow. Over the, over the head. Head over, head over, head over. Come on, Jim. Well, I'm the Blokas corner, I'm going and now to some replay action from round 11. And here it is again, that jab, just pumping him back. Snapping that head back off of that jab, bam. Snapping that head back with the straight jab again there, bam. And you see in here, nice digging body shots there from Kedjir. Nice body shots. And you can see Kedjir fire left hook, boom, with that right hand response, left hook. Coming back from Blokas. Good counter boxing from Blokas all day long, all night long. Wow, look at that. And they gave Kedjir that round. Well, you know what? Even if you're in the ring, it doesn't matter who you agree with. You'd have to go into this round understanding that there might be, at the most, one point difference. And so you have to do what Kedjir's trying to do here, win it in the last round. He has no choice right now. He's got to turn. I mean, either one of these guys That's right. have no choice right now because the fight is really that close. Yeah, and anybody who would go into the 12th round of this fight thinking they had it won would be the eventual loser. Right. And the danger, of course, of all this is, is as they're flailing away, if one of those lands on the button, the fight is over. Great good finish. defense. Good defensive blocks there from Lucas coming back. You know, Blokas has, uh, we haven't talked much about his defensive fight here, but he has really fought. Oh, look at that. Looked like he, he may have injured something throwing that punch. He has covered up nicely, though, hasn't he? Yeah, Kept he, the elbows tucked on the rib cage. And very nice and tight on defense that he could come back with those shots because they're nice and high. Well, he does and he not got hit with well, the uppercut. Yeah. You know what, though? When he threw that, that other punch, when he, when, he, when he crossed his body, I don't know if he pulled a muscle or what, but when he went to throw it again, he, he was really in some agony there. There is a, there's some sort of a, a muscle or injury problem for Blokas, I believe. And Keju is just trying to pick his shots and get back into the fight. Could possibly be just some cramping. Probably. Remember, it's his first time getting fighting these yes. 12 rounds, even though he said that he's in the corner of one of the rounds that he's been training and boxing 12, 13 rounds, 14 rounds. Yeah, you see, the right does not extend on Blokas. What an opportunity for Kadu. Wow, what a couple of warriors. Look at this. Final 40 seconds of the fight. Will it, in fact, go the distance? And nice right hand over the top with 30 seconds left. 
and both of these guys are trading to the end. Yeah. And Bloke is starting to get through with that right hand. <laughs> yeah, Kedju coming back with that right hand. You see how he changed it, though? It was more of a chop than an over-the-shoulder punch. There's the, okay, now he's back to throwing it. And again, look, he didn't look well there. Interesting. Final seconds, round 12 for the vacant WBO NABO heavyweight title. Everybody going full blast here. Both fighters leaving it all on the mat. And there it is. It's over. That is the ultimate respect. Wow. How would you score this? This is going to be tight. This is going to be a very tight, tight, tight call. I don't see it being any more than one point. You? Uh, two max? I mean, if it was more than that. I would say two rounds was a question. That, like, I, I'm... But it, it could go in either direction. That's the thing now. It's like two rounds for who, you know? Yeah, I know. That's right. <laughs> Because yeah, both of these guys wow, put in a lot of work today. Let's check out the replays here for the last round. There's that snapping jab there. To me, it'd be those, the right hook over the top, left hook after that. I think it'd be the rounds that I, I see the most damaging, like where he's cut here, Kedjia. He's been, his head's been snapped back off of certain shots. So All I right. think I'd go with uh, Blokus on this fight. Split decision victory. Well, let's go to the center of the ring. Get your pens and papers out and write down the scorecard. It's going to be fascinating. Let's listen in. Mesdames et messieurs, voici maintenant la décision des juges. Ladies and gentlemen, here from ringside is the judge's decision. Le juge Woodburn remet une carte de pointage de 115, 113, Cadieu. Judge Woodburn scores this bout 115, 113, Cadieu. Le juge Kansa, 117, 111, Blocus. Judge Kansa scores it, 117, 111, Blocus. Et le juge de Carufel, 118, 110. Judge de Carufel scores this belt, 118, 110 for the winner by split decision. And new NAPO heavyweight champion, le gagnant par décision partagée. A nouveau champion des poids lourds de la NABO, Josué Bloque. Wow. And Locus you know, the winner. I and think you never think that they would give this guy a split decision in a guy's hometown. And he, and he, and he did it. He, you know, and he's, and he's well deserving of it also. Well, that was a decisive third card. Did I have it 118-110? 118-110 and 117-111. Wow. Well, it was a marvelous fight. I'm glad we were able to bring it to you. And, you know, just relentless action. Blokus wins, as you say, an odd split decision victory. And, uh, you know, the, the, only the uh, the Kadu card was close. The, the two Blokus cards were rather decisive. Right. And the one thing with Kadu, you got to give credit to the boxing skills. But when you get another skilled guy there, we'll see how it turns out. I'm Jim Taddy for Ryan Grant. Thanks for allowing us into your homes.